Hi everyone, welcome to week four. This week we're going to be doing advanced HTML. It's not so advanced, it's just we're combining everything that we learned so far and then we're styling it. So a couple announcements before we start. Your assignment number two grade should be in. Um, overall, you guys did well. Um, just make sure you're reading the instructions carefully, submitting the appropriate files, not doing anything that was not taught in class. Um, so all of you did pretty well, so it should be fine. Okay, assignment three is going to be due this Friday, so that should be similar to last week's recitation. So you can go back and watch that video if you need help on the third assignment. And you have a quiz on digitizing. So this is not a topic that we've worked on in recitation. It's going to be something that you worked on in lecture. So review lecture notes, resources, anything like that to prepare for the quiz. It's going to be a similar setup like last week. And then these recitation resources will be posted Tuesday night. By that, I mean the source code of a finished recitation task is going to be posted Tuesday night. I'm doing Tuesday night because I also teach another recitation that's in person on Tuesdays, and I don't want to give them the answers before the recitation actually starts because that defeats the purpose. So that's that. Um, any questions you have, obviously email me if you can't make office hours or lab hours. Office hours are for like one-on-one -on -one things. And lab hours, you can go to any TAs, and those are going to be more assignment-based questions. Okay, so we're going to get started with the assignment. We don't have any like other stuff to cover before the task. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to Canvas Files, go to My Name, go to the Rec4 folder, and you're going to find paradox.html. So I want you to download that and open it with Sublime and open it with Chrome. Once you do that, we're going to start editing that file to look like this file. So you should see a plain file like this. And we're gonna style it and add some tables and lists to make it look like this. Obviously, this is not like the greatest looking thing, but it just serves the purpose of teaching you everything that you should know for this class about styles. Okay, so let's get rid of this for now. We're going to turn the first mention of Bertman Russell into a hyperlink. So we're going to use the A tag that we learned about this in the last recitation, and you're going to make it point to this link. So let's just copy the link, or let's copy the tag first. And we're going to put it around Bertrand Russell over here and then copy the link. We're gonna replace this href attribute and where it says URL, we're gonna put in the actual URL. And then where it says Burton Russell, we take that out and we put that into this link text that it says over here. So now, once you press Command S or just press File Save, come here, refresh, it should turn up, it should actually turn up purple, but because I was already editing this document, it's gonna, sh I mean, it should actually turn up blue. But because I was already editing this document, it should it turn purple as if you already clicked on the link. I just call that like linkifying something because you know, you can actually click on it. We're gonna do the same thing with Renee Magritte. We're gonna find a link for her because I didn't attach one on the slides. This little and EAQT thing, it just means for the little symbol above the E. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. I'm going to copy the A tag. Let's put it here. I'm going to copy the name. And we're going to put it in this link text. Okay. And then we have to find a URL for Renee Magritte. So you can just like search on Google, find any Wikipedia page that you find, and just copy the link. Once you do that, paste that here. Press save. That should work. Okay, there you go. Okay. Next. So that's just like the overview of hyperlinks. That's also something we covered last week. Okay. Images. So images, what we touched on last week as well. You're going to have different types of images. You're going to have locally sourced ones, like things that you have already downloaded in your file, you have things that you can link to, you can put a link to an image that already exists on the internet, something like that. There's going to be different ways. 
and this is where you put that link or if you just already have it downloaded something like cat.jpg you would put that here as well so we insert an image related to Belgium at the beginning of the Magritte paragraph. Enter an appropriate width and height, and the image source will be a remote image URL. So we're going to put in a URL. Okay, so let's put this Belgium image at the beginning of the Magritte paragraph. So let's put it right here. And so Belgium. Actually, I think I already have a link. Mm. Oh, right here. So I'm just going to copy paste this link, put that here. The width, you can put whatever width and height you want. I have these already preset to 120 and to 80 as the height. And this alt stands for alternate names. So in case the image link doesn't work, maybe they delete it off the internet. If that happens, then this name is going to pop up. So let's save this, refresh. It'll be a little image. Obviously it looks ugly because we didn't have any padding. We did not styling anything of that yet okay styles so we're gonna do a couple different styles the image might not be well positioned so we're gonna style with float left so I already happen to do that so this is a style attribute almost every tag will have a style attribute this means you put it before the cl tag closes. So see how the image tag opens here, but then closes here, and all of our attributes are gonna be inside the opening tag. They're not gonna be after you close the opening tag. So you have the style attribute source and everything like that. Style float left. So let's see what happens if we don't float it left. everything gets pushed to the bottom. So this is just trying to save space. Obviously, even though it does save space, it doesn't really look that good. So you'd add padding and things like that, but that's not something we're gonna work on today. Okay. Change the background of the body to black and the font color to yellow. Okay, so the background of the body. So that's gonna be up here. The font color is going to be yellow, but the thing is, when you're changing font color, you're not going to write the attribute as font color, it's just going to be color. So, it's going to look like this. Style background color black, and then you put a semicolon color yellow so that part just stands for the font you press save and it should be yellow okay now change the text color of the body to lime by adding code in the head tag so now we're going to change this yellow to lime but we're not going to put change this word to lime we're, let's put it in this head tag so head tag opens there closes there so we're going to put it like this. I'm just copy pasting because that makes my life easier by not wasting time typing it out. Okay, so I have a style tag. Actually, let's add the style tag after the tag. So this style tag is inside the head. It's a nested tag. And now this is this style tag, whatever attribute you have, it can style that tag so let's say you want to style something else like another type of tag then you could also put it in here obviously it makes it more confusing because it's better to just style the tag wherever the tag exists but let's say now you want to do line press save cancel refresh nothing happens there is a problem and i'm going to pause so you guys can think of what is a problem why won't this color change to line Take a minute to think about that.
So the reason that it doesn't change to lime is because there's a conflict between styling the body tack. You can't style in two different places, and if you do, the closest style is going to win. So right now, the closest style to the body tag is the one we put in the body tag with the color of yellow. Let's say we change this to like blue. Now, everything should turn blue, but it's not going to turn the line. This, just because you put something in the head, doesn't mean you override it. Whatever is closest to the actual tag will override it. So let's just comment that out and make this line like it was supposed to be. Now it's all like the greenish color. Okay. Okay, so now delete color yellow. That's fine, we just commented that out for now. Using the span tag, apply the red color only to the word paradoxically, close to the end of the text. In the span tag, it's going to be used when you're putting it in line styles, especially if it's a single word. So that's something you should do. Find the word paradoxically. Okay. We're going to put a span. And let's close the span. Put the word in the middle. And we're going to style it. What color? Red. Okay. I'm just going to copy this. The style attribute, the color, and red. Press save. So paradoxically, right now, it's green. Refresh. It should be red. Okay. Next. List. So this lists and tables and borders of what we're going to do next. This should also be kind of review. Everything in here except for the span and some of the style stuff should be review. We're going to recreate this list. So I want you to take a second and think of all the tags that we would use to make this. Okay, so if we have bullet points, is it ordered or unordered? Can be unordered because it has no order, there's no numbers to it. So you're gonna have a UL list with a nested list under intermission. We're gonna have another UL nested list, and then we're going to have a title for that. So let's go down to this list, and I'm just gonna copy paste for the sake of making this video less shorter for you guys. And after this P tag, so at the end of this page, right around here, we're going to put in this list. So this P tag is just text. Normally for captions, I mean for tables, you would have a caption tag, but for lists, we're going to put a P tag. Here's our unordered list. It opens here, closes here. And then we have three list items. One, two, three. Inside this intermission, we have a nested unordered list with two list items. Now, notice we also have this I tag. The I tag stands for italics. You might have used this in your last assignment. So you can just put the italics tag inside this list tag. These are also nested here. But notice how the actual years are not italicized, only the words are. That's like details you should pay attention to, especially when you're trying to copy from the sample for assignments. You know, is something really italicized, is something not? So a couple people, a couple things people did was, for the sources at the bottom of the assignment, they made that into an anchor tag, instead of just italicizing it. So, I had to take off points for that because that was not part of the assignment, because that was something we learned in the recitation afterwards. So it's important to do the assignment during that week of recitation, so you don't get confused of what other tags you can also use. Okay, so let's press save and refresh, and it should show up. Let's make sure everything looks similar so far to what we did. Okay, so other than these other colors, we have it similar. Okay. Table. So we're going to make a table with these descriptions. Border of one, this caption, two headers, and two cells of data. Okay. So let's just do this right under the list. Just push everything down. Okay, so make sure you have a table tag and make sure you close it. 
we're going to do border is equal to one and we need two rows one is going to be the header row and one is going to be the data row okay and in each row we're going to put two tags first one's going to have th tags for table header and the second one is going to have so it's a good idea to space it out or else everything starts to look very confusing second one's going to have just tr tags because they're not going to be bolded some people on the assignment they bolded all of their tags so or they bolded their th tag so there's no reason to bold any type of header tag the point of a header tag is that it's going to be a bigger size or bolded things like that okay and in that we're just going to copy paste this oh, we also need a caption so artist okay instead of copy pasting i'm just going to pull it from here to save this time or a caption remember it's a caption not a p tag some people get that mixed up and we just put in all the inf content for this thing so let's press save refresh here's a little table so notice how it's already bolded because it's a th tag you don't have to bold it manually with like a b tag or anything okay and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to use box model concepts for these borders. So notice how when I showed like the final representation of the recitation, tax, recitation task, some of them had borders. So what we're going to do is apply a red border to the Russell's Paradox H2 heading and a yellow border to the McGree Paradox H2 heading. And we're going to bake them both 5px. So remember, these are border attributes that are going to be in a style tag inside the opening tag okay so russell's paradox and magritte's paradox russell's paradox is up here so let's just quickly find that where'd it go there it is okay so i'm just going to copy this so it's easier a style border of 5px and solid red solid just means that's the type of line you could have dotted dashed things like that we're going to press save and you should have a solid border let's say we did like dotted it'll be dotted you can also have dashed or not dashed dashed okay i got dashed and we're going to do the same thing for the McGree Paradox. I think they want a different color. Yes, they want a yellow. Solid yellow. Okay, save. Now we have a yellow border. Okay, and that should be it for this task. It's just a review of everything we learned from so far, including borders and more stylings. And this link, you could refer to this link if you want to learn more about like CSS box models, um, but it's up to you. Okay, so everything should be good. I'm going to be posting these slides and this HTML document, the completed one. I'll post the completed one around Tuesday night and I'll post these slides right now. And the attendance code word is going to be hand sanitizer because i see a hand sanitizer okay um we'll have a good week let me know if you have any questions bye